You're listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. It is Thursday evening, September 7th, and we have now entered the part of the year where the atmosphere responds drastically to the decrease of solar insulation. Everything is about three weeks. Sometimes there's a three to four week delay between the decrease of solar insulation until we finally start to feel it. And this is when we finally start to feel it. You know, the National Weather Service considers September 1st the first day of fall for them, but in reality, the hottest 90-day period really ends around September 6th or so, and you'll see the normal high temperatures for a city like Chicago actually starts to make continuous progress downward starting the second week of September onward. In fact, September is the third quickest dropping temperature month. I'm sure there's a better way to word that, but uh, that's the fact. And November is the quickest drop in temperatures on average for here in Chicago and probably all other cities in the Midwest. The reason why September temperatures really start to drop and we wait till September 7th is because, you know, the weather's a lot more complex than we ordinarily think. Solar insulation here in the Chicago area is really not the main thing. That's not really what determines what the high temperatures are or the low temperatures, with the exception of little events like what happened in Minneapolis the other day where the National Weather Service feels it would have been 100 degrees had either the clouds been out of there in the morning or the day would have been, there would have been more solar insulation temperatures would have hit 100 degrees. So we see that the solar insulation, if that's correct, we see that the solar insulation, the weakening solar insulation here in Chicago did play a role in temperatures. The high was only, well, Minneapolis, but it's the same thing here in Chicago. The high was only 97 degrees, if they're in fact correct. But the situation's a lot more complex. There's actually at least four variables, which is leading to a quick change over to fall. It's not just solar insulation around here. Now, here is what happens. The main force, the driving force here in the Midwest and many places in the world, but especially here in the Midwest, the main driving force for all weather is the jet stream. It's not the solar insulation. So the jet stream is the main driving force. The question is, what role does solar insulation play on the jet stream? And we're going to hear something pretty phenomenal right now uh, for some people who have never heard this before. So something extraordinary happens in June. You, you know, in June, you know, we could say Mother Nature. We're addressing a diverse crowd over here. So we'll call it Mother Nature, but uh, you can be as spiritual and religious as you want and replace that word with something else if you uh, feel a different word would be more appropriate. Mother Nature has gone out of her way to guarantee that we have an amazing summer, a real summer. And the way this happens the real way this happened is by increasing the solar insulation up north by the North Pole in the months of May, June, July to something which is so intense and so disproportionate to the rest of the northern hemisphere that it actually weakens the jet stream and to some extent the jet stream kind of just falls apart. So we get these heat domes that just stay become stationary and stuff like that. So in even up north, the temperatures become extremely warm. We have heat domes even up north. That's all due to this, uh, the solar insulation all in all kind of averages out. It becomes more intense up north. That combined with the fact that just the atmosphere in general is much warmer down south. So we have decreased solar insulation in the south. The days are shorter down south. So, but that, everything all said and all, the jet stream which gets its energy from contrast in temperatures, that jet stream weakens tremendously because that contrast in temperatures pretty much disappears. There's very little contrast in temperatures. But there's two things that change when you go into the month of end of July in August already. August, you have one thing that changes. By August, I looked into this about a year ago, maybe it was two years ago, and by August, the solar insulation graph goes back into normal territory. The further north you go, the lower the solar insulation is. So by August already, we start to see more of a contrast in temperatures between 
northern areas and southern areas. We start to see it. However, even up north, if you compare tropical sunshine, let's say we give the definition what, how much solar insulation is necessary for it to be considered tropical. So what I did a year or two ago was I looked at how much solar insulation occurs in Honolulu, Hawaii on December 21st. Honolulu, Hawaii is almost on the Tropic of Cancer. It's about as north as you can get, almost as far north as you can get, but still remain within the tropics. So, and that's the week, the day the sun is the weakest out of the whole year. So, I figured any day in which the North Pole or the Arctic area has solar insulation, which is at least on par with Honolulu, Hawaii for December 21st, we can call that tropical sunshine. So, the North Pole, the Arctic area, does not lose tropical sunshine status until the very end of August. So, by the very end of August, we reach a new milestone in that the sun is now much weaker it's probably down to only a uh, 40 well uh, let's not give an angle yet although it's probably easy to figure out you know by uh, September 21st it becomes much easier to figure out but it's going to become very mathematical and everyone's going to tune out and turn this whole thing off so we'll leave that if you haven't done it already uh, so leaving that part out but so you have up north, they lose the status of tropical sunshine. And in a certain way, they all, practically speaking, they kind of lose that status already in the beginning of August, unless there's no clouds at all. Up north, the way the solar insulation accumulates is when the sun is shining for a very large part of the day. Whereas in Honolulu, Hawaii, all you need is to have cloud-free, clear skies, for you know 11 hours out of the day on December 21st and you've got it up north you need close to 24 hours of continuous sunshine so in a certain way you can assume they've already lost that status by the end of July okay then by September 21st we reach another milestone in that the sun sets for six months in certain places up north so the temperatures really start to drop once those temperatures start to drop up north we start to get that contrast in temperatures and the jet stream becomes really intense. It really becomes intense and the jet stream starts to play a major, it becomes a major variable in our weather once again. So the jet stream, which really was pretty weak over the summer and kind of just left things alone, it let the sun heat things up and it just left things alone. Uh, the cold fronts from up north kind of just died down. That is returning. So the decrease in solar insulation, what that does is it produces a heat dome which would have produced 100 degree heat. It's only going to produce 97 degree heat. So it's really very minor stuff. The fact that the sun is weaker. It's the fact that the sun is weaker all the way up north and the fact that it's no longer disproportionate. Now everything is in order. You have, as the further north you go, the weaker the solar insulation is. So that further increases the contrast in temperatures. And then once you get September 21st and it becomes night up there, so then the temperatures just continuously fall. And I think in the beginning of December, the entire Arctic is all night. So that's when you get the, uh, uh, the final, that's a new milestone when you get to the beginning of December. And things generally take about three weeks before we feel the effect from each and every milestone. So we clearly are in a different season. We actually not only f saw that immediately after that 100 degree day here in Chicago, we had a fall air mass. And if people didn't think that was a fall air mass, certainly the second air mass that hit that week was a fall air mass. The summer heat that hit Minneapolis actually, I think, is even more of a proof that we are in fall and that summer is completely over with. It's completely amazing that that dome of heat, which seemingly went to the southwest and made a return 10 days later, returned as something totally different than the way it departed. It departed from us as a 100 degree heat, 2.80 degrees, just the most intense heat ever, and then it goes away for 10 days. It comes back still a phenomenal heat dome, the geographical heights of 595, the humidity disappears, 
the corn crops are being harvested. There's plenty of corn crop that's not been harvested. And the temperatures, even without the humidity, fail to reach 100 degrees. We can't even get highs. I, I think maybe they made it to 94. Uh, meteorologist Tom Skilling said something this evening that implied temperatures made it to 94 here in the Chicago area. Uh, for the high temperature today or tomorrow, only 69 degrees, and that's a, a solid 25 degrees cooler than what we had earlier this week. So uh, that already, it's even the hot air mass that's an indicator that we are in a different season. We now head into the northeast winds. Winds are off the lake for the next several days here in Chicago. Long-term forecasters tell us that all week next week, all the way through Friday, says meteorologist Tom Skilling, below normal temperatures the entire week. That's thanks to high pressure off to our north and to our west. And believe it or not, this evening already, temperatures dropped to 50 in parts of the upper Midwest in Michigan. As of this evening, already down to 50 Where's that air coming from? We have brutal heat on the East Coast today. That's going to be followed by thunderstorms, and that brings the heat to an end over there. So we're totally in fall. I would say September 7th. I think if you want to pick the most accurate date for the end of summer, it's the end of the hottest night. If summer is defined as the hottest 90-day period, which I don't think that should really be the real definition of summer. I, I think summer should be split up. For many places, it should be split up into two seasons. I don't know what to call one of the seasons, but you have, there's like a, you can't put July and August into the same category as June and September. And also the, the, the September 1st deal is pretty close to accurate. The National Weather, if you're gonna go with the hottest 90 day period, so then September 1st with the National Weather Service laws is pretty accurate, but the most accurate would be about September 7th. Uh, the least accurate is the astrological or the astronomical official start of September 21st. That's about two weeks off. The National Weather Service starts one week off. Uh, but really the hottest 90-day period, you know, there really should be a... That should be split up. There should be a 45-day hottest period surrounded by some other period. And then fall, you know, fall could also be split up into two. And the winter, I guess it depends where you live. It depends really where you live. A lot of places, they have six months of summer. Anyways, the hottest 90-day period here in Chicago finishes September 6th. The Labor Day, uh, Labor Day is a great, Labor Day is actually the most accurate, probably that almost matches up perfectly if you want to determine when the final hottest day of the 90-day period is. It's right around Labor Day, maybe a day or two after Labor Day. Uh, in, in regards to the start, you know, it would be also about June 7th and December 7th. And it's interesting that in the uh, Jewish faith, we actually start to insert something into our Shmona Esrei, into the prayers which indicate winter. We start doing it December 5th. And if you actually try to figure out the coldest 90-day period, it's about December 7th. So that December 5th is... Uh, that's a nice, uh, I, I think that's an, uh, probably, uh, if there has to be a date that's most accurate that is official from some, from, from somewhere, uh, so it would be December 5th. Anyways, so for those people that like the fall weather, uh, the way Tom Skilling worded it is that Mother Nature has brought air conditioning into the city, so we don't even have to put on our air conditioners anymore. Uh, <laughs> that's the uh, that's a bright way of wording it. Uh, many of us are grieving. We're in tremendous grief over the fact that summer is over, and we cannot wait for winter to arrive. 
which will be our next excitement. We actually have a two-week severe weather season for most in the Midwest. For the end of October, the beginning of November, that's going to be the next period of excitement here in the Midwest. So we're about six weeks away from the severe weather season number two, which is only two weeks long, and that affects cities like St. Louis, but sometimes Chicago can get into the action. But the real excitement comes in the winter for a city like Chicago, but especially Minneapolis, and some winter Chicago with all of the winter storms. Thank you for listening. I wish everybody a wonderful weekend and enjoy the beautiful weather, even on the East Coast. Beautiful weather is moving in. You've been listening to Weather with Enthusiasm.